Hi, welcome to the video solution for physics past paper. This is Cambridge Physics 9702 October November 2019 uh, series. So uh, let's uh, start. Question number 21 Two graphs uh, represent the same wave. Graph 1 shows variation with time of the displacement at a particular distance. Graph 2 shows variation with the distance of the displacement at one instant. So basically these are the two graphs. This is displacement versus time and this is displacement versus distance graph. So what is the speed of the wave? Uh, we need to find the speed and if you see in general we say speed is uh, frequency times wavelength and here's the key idea frequency we can figure out from graph 1 and wavelength we can figure out from graph 2 and how do we do that we know that this is displacement time graph so we can find time period of the wave so time period is the time required to complete or to generate one wave that means from here till here this is one wave and you see the time is given 0 0.5 second so time is 0 0.5 second that means frequency is 1 upon t so f is equal to 2 hertz this is frequency and for wavelength wavelength is the length of the one wave so starting from there you see the one wave is completing at that point so the total distance between these two point is 60 centimeter so the wavelength is 60 centimeter and we don't need to convert the centimeter into meter because they are giving velocity all the velocities are in centimeters so don't need to convert don't waste time if you wish you can convert but again you will have to uh, uh, give answer in terms of centimeter so leave it as as it is now we have a frequency we have wavelength so velocity is equal to 2 times 60 that means 120 centimeter per second option is d question number 22 a microphone is connected to a cathode ray oscilloscope where when a tuning fork is struck and then held next to the microphone the following waveform is shown on the display of the CRO this is the waveform on cathode ray oscilloscope the time based setting is of of CRO is 2 millisecond per division what is the best estimate of frequency of the sound produced by tuning fork okay uh, around same question as we did before because we are given uh, oscilloscope graph and remember the horizontal uh, horizontal axis in oscilloscope graph is always measure time remember this is time measurement and there is another uh, thing that you must uh, you know uh, keep in your mind most of the students uh, in hurry I, I i will say they consider this as meter second remember this is time based axis so it cannot be meter it is basically milli so 10 to the power minus 3 so again we need to find uh, frequency time based access is given so time for one wave from here till here this is one wave that means there are two boxes uh, two divisions are there so that means total time for one wave is 4 millisecond this is time period and frequency is f is equal to 1 upon t so 1 upon 4 into 10 to the power minus 3 and if you uh, solve this so your answer will be 250 hertz meaning option is c Twenty three, a loudspeaker emitting a constant frequency of two thousand hertz is swung in a horizontal circle with a speed of fifty. A stationary observer is a level with the loudspeaker and situated a long distance from the loudspeaker. The observer 
here's the sound of varying frequency the maximum frequency heard is 2097 hertz what is the speed of the sound in the air it is a doppler effect question uh, so in doppler effect we have approach of uh, receive frequency received frequency f dash is equal to because here source is moving if source is moving then we have a formula for source moving is v over v minus v s into f because source is moving so we use minus sign in denominator where f dash is the received frequency that means this is your f dash f is the uh, original frequency produced by the source this is produced by the source this is your f vs is the speed of uh, source which is 15 and now clearly if you substitute all the three numbers in this equation so you can figure out v uh, you can skip a lot of step but i am uh, solving in detail uh, so you can understand uh, because we need to find v we have a uh, two places at, at which we have v so we use you know algebra or uh, mathematics to figure out v so i'm sending v minus vs on the other side and multiplying by f dash so i have f dash v minus f dash vs is equal to vf so v is there and on the right hand side so gather all the v's at one place so f dash v minus vf is equal to f dash vs and finally v is common so v is equal to f dash s it's not s sorry it's vs divided by f dash minus f substitute all the number so this is uh, 2097 f dash times vs speed of the source which is 15 divided by f dash minus f so 2097 minus 2000 if you solve this you will have v as uh, 324.27 meter per second that means your option is c Twenty-four. Two electromagnetic waves have wavelength of five ten to the power minus seven meter and five ten to the power minus two meter. Which row identifies the region of electromagnetic spectrum to which the wave belongs? Uh, so the idea is, it's it is better if you you know this is top uh, typical question if you uh, uh, memorize the the whole spectrum from gamma. To radio waves and approximate wavelength of each region so you can do it in just less than 10 seconds uh, but now I am I'm giving you idea how to uh, solve this or how to figure out see if you see this whenever I see minus 7 so I need to convert this into minus 9 so it will be 500 if I shift decimal two places so 500 10 to the power minus 9 meter that means 500 nanometer and 500 nanometer is a visible range because visible range is uh, approximately from 4000 nanometer till sorry I, I guess i said 4000 not 4000 from 400 nanometer till 700 nanometer this is the visible range and 500 lies between these that means this electromagnetic wave belongs to visible region so i have option either b or d don't waste time of thinking a and c now from b and c just go to the second one this is 5 into 10 to the power minus 2 and if you see the minus 2 minus 2 is centi c that means this is 5 centimeter and centimeter is the range or uh, range of the wavelength for microwave microwave is range from you know in centimeter 5 6 10 12 centimeters that means this uh, wave belongs to microwave so not infra microwave 
So our option is B. Twenty-five. A transmitter of electromagnetic wave is placed forty-five centimeter from a reflective surface. Transmitter, reflective surface, forty-five centimeter distance. The emitted wave have a frequency of one gigahertz. This is frequency. A stationary wave is produced with a node at uh, the transmitter and a node at the surface. How many anti nodes are in this space between the transmitter and the surface? So what happened? Transmitter wave is emitting a wave that is reflected from the surface and returning and these two waves Overlapping or interfering produce a pattern of nodes and anti nodes or stationary waves So what are they saying in this distance 45 centimeter? We have node At transmitter and we have node at the reflective surface. So how many anti nodes are there? so first we need to figure out Wavelength of the produced uh, wave, and uh, then we compare with the 45, and then we can have something. So, this is all about electromagnetic waves, and frequency is given. So, we can figure out wavelength. So, wavelength lambda is velocity upon frequency, that means electromagnetic waves 3 into 10 to the power 8 divided by frequency 1 gigahertz 10 to the power 9 giga so lambda is around 0 0.03 meter so it's not 0 0.33 yeah it is 0 0.3 meter but scales is given in centimeters so lambda is equal to 30 centimeter and now if you compare the wavelength uh, emitted by the transmitter with the distance so 45 divided by 30 will give you 1.5 that means uh, the total number of waves generated in this region is 1.5 one and a half waves so you can imagine one and a half wave is something like uh, this is node and this is node so you can imagine something like see this is one wave and then half wave and then if you complete so this is one and half wave and how many anti nodes one two and three so there are three anti nodes a a and a and this is the total uh, waves are 1.5 waves so that's how you figure out and three anti nodes so option is c twenty six which is statement about a light wave and a sound wave is correct both can travel through free space we need to find the option which are correct for both sound and light so both can travel through free space no it is not correct because light can travel from free space but sound cannot because sounds are mechanical waves sound waves need mediums both waves have a frequency inversely proportional to their wavelength uh, yes because we have a same formula uh, f lambda is equal to v both wave has is intensity proportional to their amplitude no because uh, intensity of electromagnetic waves depends on distance uh, other than amplitude so c cannot be our option so a cannot be our option because of the uh, sound waves can travel cannot travel through free space c cannot be our option because intensity of electromagnetic wave depends on the distance from the source and both have oscillation perpendicular to the direction of energy transfer no transverse wave in transverse wave uh, oscillation is perpendicular to the um, uh, direction of motion and this is electromagnetic waves while uh, for sound waves oscillation is parallel to the direction of travel that's the difference between transverse and longitudinal waves or, or compressional waves so electromagnetic waves are transverse wave uh, sound waves are mechanical waves so they cannot you know this is incorrect statement for both 
so b is your right option both have a frequency inversely proportional to their wavelength because f lambda is equal to v if v is constant for given conditions and frequency is equal to one upon v upon lambda so f is proportional to one upon lambda proportional to one upon lambda or inversely proportional to lambda both statements are correct Twenty-seven. An outdoor concert have, has two large speakers beside the stage for broadcasting music. In order to test the speakers, they are made to emit sound of the same wavelength and same amplitude. The curved line in the diagram represents wavefronts. Where is the loudest sound here? This is all about interference of wave or interference of sound. Remember, if a crust combined with crust trough combined with trough then we have constructive interference or high sound or constructive and if crust meet with trough of the other then we have a low sound or no sound or destructive interference and this is these are the wavefront an idea about the wavefront is remember these each solid line represents either crust or trough it's up to you you can take it uh, is as a crust followed by another crust that means in between two solid lines we have the opposite motion if i say these solid lines are crust that means in between we have trough that's what happens so crust trough crust trough that's how uh, uh, wave travel so we need to find these condition in the diagram whether the crust is meeting with crust or trough with the trough for loud sound so if you see a a is crust of uh, one but trough of the other like this similar for uh, c c is not allowed as because here it is close to the crust of this so here will be a low sound but not the high one same for b b is at the crust of one but trough of the other but d is crust of the one and crust of the other so d is the position where we have a loudest uh, sound so d is your option question number 28 an electromagnetic wave is incident normally on a diffraction grating a second order maxima is produced at an angle of 30 degree to the normal to the grating. The grating has 5000 lines per centimeter. What is wavelength of wave? So for diffraction grating, we have a most typical uh, approach for constructive interference or maxima. We have a, a d sin theta, which is a path difference. d sin theta is equal to n lambda. That means if we need to find the wavelength, so we just rearrange, so lambda is equal to d sine theta divided by n. So for wavelength, we need theta, which is 30 degree. We need n, order of the, you know, fringe or order of the color or maxima band, which is second order. So n is equal to 2. What about D? D is called grating element and D is found using the number of lines per centimeter. So basically D is D is 1 upon 5000 centimeter. That means D is equal to 4 One upon five, okay sorry 2 into 10 to the power minus 4 if you divide 1 upon 5000 and if you remove the centi so it will be 10 to the power minus 2 that means d is in fact 2 into 10 to the power minus 6 meter this is greeting element substitute all the number 
so you can do d is 2 into 10 to the power minus 6 sine of 30 degree divided by 2 so lambda will give you uh, 5 into 10 to the power minus 7 meter option is B point P is the point near to a charge X as shown. This is a charge X and there's a point away from X. When a negatively charged test charge is placed at a point P, it is found to experience a force of repulsion from X that is directly away, uh, sorry, that is radially away from X, which arrow correctly shows the direction of electric field at point P due to the charge X. Clearly, we have a repulsion between the two charges and we are placing a negative charge at P. We are placing negative charge at P and it is experiencing repulsive force. That means X is negative charge. So for negative charge, the electric field is always points towards the charge and with respect to P, towards the charge at point P should be towards X. So it, this is the, air, the correct arrow. You can show electric field. So option is C. Thirty. A charged oil drop of mass m with an with n x is electrons is held is stationary in the uniform electric field between the two horizontal plates separated by a distance d. Uh, so this is oil drop mass m distance between the plate is d the voltage between the plate is v uh, the elementary charge is e and the acceleration of free fall is g what is the value of n so if you see this charge is in a stationary state between the plate so there are two forces acting on the on 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 the oil drop in order to you know keep it stationary one is the weight acting down w and the other one is holding force or you can say electrostatic force acting upward because these these two forces are balancing each other or cancelling the effect so there is no resultant force on the charge that's why it is at a stationary so we can say that we can have a uh, electrostatic force fe is equal to weight this F is electrostatic or electric force. And we know that electric force can be written as F is equal to EQ. EQ is equal to MG. But they are not giving charge in terms of Q. They are giving elementary charge E. So N is the number of electron. X is electron. And charge on one electron is E. So I can write E is equal to this Q is the total charge. So E into uh, NE. So Q is NE is equal Mg. So moreover, because all the options, the you know, uh, don't involve uh, E. So we need to replace E. And this E is V by D. This E is V by D as per definition. E has two formulae. E equal to force per unit charge and E is equal to V by D. So E is equal to V by D into N E is equal to M G and you can rearrange for N. So N is equal to M G D divided by V E. And see, this is your option. Thirty one. When the current in a wire is five ampere, the average drift speed of the conduction electron in the wire is 7.4 10 to the power minus 4 meter per second. Which row gives 
a possible cross-sectional area and number of conduction electrons per unit volume for this wire. So we have a relation of drift speed and the current I is equal to N A Q V. This is a general equation of drift speed, which is also known as transport equation. And for the sake of calculation, I am assuming the charge is E. So I is equal to N a e v because we need to figure out uh, cross sectional area and the number of electron uh, per unit volume so we rearrange for this for n a that means n a is i upon e v and if you substitute the number so n is equal sorry not n n a is equal to i I is 5, 5 ampere current divided by E. E is 1.6, 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb. This is the charge on one electron times drift speed. And drift speed is 7.4 into 10 to the power minus 4. And you solve this, then the product of Na, Na will give you 4.22 into 10 to the power 22 so you know it is just for your uh, you know your curiosity they are not asking but can you figure out the unit of this product it's just an additional thing think about it and see if you if you know the unit okay but here we we, we don't need we, we don't consider with the unit now, what's how to choose this? So you just quickly multiply each option together and see which one is giving you the same number. If you multiply, option A will give you 8.64. Option B will give you 4.24 something. And this will give you 16 point or 1.67. And I'm not writing here 10 to the power, okay? I'm not writing here 10 to the power. You can just write yourself. Uh, D will give you 8.51, something like that, 10 to the power here. So you just look at these number, the product. So option B is giving you 4.2 into 10 to the power 22, as same as this. That means our option should be B. Thirty-two. A fixed resistor of resistance twelve ohm is connected to a battery. There is a current of point two ampere in the resistor. The current is now double. What is the new power dissipation? So first we figure out the power, uh, original power for that current, uh, that given condition. So power, current and resistance given. So P is equal to I square R. So you can find I is 0 0.2 squared, R is 12. That means your power is 0 0.48. watt this is your power when current is 0.2 and this is 12 now the current is double if current is double so you can say that power is basically directly proportional to i square i square if current is double so double means 2 square 2 square is 4 so power should be 4 times so the new power will be new power p dash will be 4 times of 0. 8. So if you multiply 4 by 0 0.48, so it will give you uh, 1.92. That means your option is C.
there is a current in a resistor for an unknown time which two quantities can be used to calculate the energy dissipated by the resistor so we need to find energy so option a the current in the resistor and the potential difference no because current and voltage uh, gives us power but not the energy the resistance and the current so resistance and current gives us uh, voltage if you see in first option you have a uh, current and the potential difference so vi vi not energy this is power the resistance r and the current so v equal ir we don't have energy here so we don't need so it will give us potential difference not the resistance the total charge passing through the resistors and the potential difference in d c should be the option why i will explain later on but what about d d total charge passing through resistors and the resistance so charge q and r so q and r will not give us any information it will give something else so but what about c if you see charge and the potential difference so what is the definition of potential difference voltage so voltage is basically energy per unit charge or sometimes we say v is work done per unit charge that means energy is v into q so if we have a voltage and we have a total charge we can figure out the energy so option is c Two cells with electromotive force E1 and E2 and internal resistances R1 and R2 are connected to a resistor R as shown. The terminal potential difference across cell 1 is 0. Uh, which expression gives the resistance of resistor R? It is a little tricky question, but let's see. If you see, we have internal resistance and EMF. So general expression, general relation between EMF and internal resistances are E1 is equal to V1 plus I R1. But they are saying potent terminal potential difference across cell 1 is 0. So E1 will be equal I R1. And for second cell, E2 is equal to V2 plus I R2. And this V2 is basically terminal potential difference across cell C2, so the R1. But uh, we need to find the resistance. So how do we do that? We are going to apply Kehoe's second law that the sum of the EMF equal to sum of the potential differences in a closed loop. So according to Kehoe's second law, I can write E1 plus E2, sum of the EMFs is equal to sum of the potential differences. And we have three resistances, R, R1, and R2. So I can say potential difference of R1 plus potential difference of R2 plus potential difference of R, which is V. And then I can write these as uh, VR1 is I R1 as per V equal to IR plus VR2 I R2 plus IR. And then I can take I as a common. So I is common. Inside we have R1 plus R2 plus R and send I on the other side so we have uh, before sending this it's better to substitute E1 so Okay, so what I do here, just make I as a subject because we are not given I in the option. So we need to remove I. So I will give us I is equal to E1 plus E2 divided by 
R1 plus R2 plus R. And the easiest equation to replace I is this. I can replace I from this equation. So now E1 is equal to I and I is E1 plus E2 divided by R1 R2 plus R into R1 which is this this is R1 now I just cross multiply and I can you know make R as a subject so if I cross multiply so I can have E1 R1 plus E1 R2 plus E1 R equal E1 R1 multiply the right hand side plus E2 R1 and now clearly E1 R1 on the right hand side E1 R1 on the left hand side cancel and uh, send E1 R2 on the other side so E1 R is equal to E2 R1 minus E1 R2 and R is equal to E2 R1 minus E1 R2 divided by E1. This is the resistance of the resistor and clearly if you see uh, yeah option is A. E2 R1 minus E1 R2 divided by E1. Thirty-five. A battery has an electromotive fourth EMF E and internal resistor R. The battery delivers a current I to a variable resistor, and the potential difference across its terminal voltage is V. Okay, so this is variable resistor. The variable resistor is adjusted so that the current I increases. If current I is increases, that means the voltage, the resistance of the variable resistance is decreasing. Okay. Why does V decreases? Remember, this is basically a concept of potential divider. You can imagine two resistances are connected with some power supply of EMF E. Then this EMF E is divided between uh, the two resistances. So E can be written as out of E, some of the voltage, some of the, uh, you know, voltage is given to the small resistors R plus V into R. So the sum of VR and VR should be equal to the EMF. And now resistance is decreasing. So why V decrease? The EMF decreases? No, because EMF is constant. So it cannot be your option. The internal resistance R increases? No. Again, internal resistance, this is a fixed resistance inside. It cannot change. So you cannot have an option B. The potential difference across R is increases. Indeed, it should be your option. The reason is because internal, sorry, uh, because potential difference VR, this VR is increasing. VR is increasing due to which VR or capital VR has to decrease so that the sum always remains E. That's why the V decrease. V means potential dif uh, difference across the variable resistance or you can say terminal potential difference. So your option is C of course. What about D? The resistance of the variable resistance increase? No because we are increasing current so internal uh, uh, variable resistance must be decreasing so we cannot have option D. A, B and D is gone so C is your option because internal uh, uh, potential difference of, of internal resistance is increasing. 36. Three identical resistors are connected uh, between terminals P and Q in different networks X, Y and Z shown 
uh, which what is the order of increasing combined resistance between P and Q lowest first okay so it's a quite easy question you figure out uh, the total resistance of each 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 circuit so suppose uh, uh, because they are saying identical resistance so if this is R R and R so all resistors are same so the combined resistance of X so combined resistance of X so this is uh, these two are in series so 2R and R and parallel so for X you can figure out because uh, this is 2R the combined resistance 2R and parallel with the R so combined resistance of O total network is is 1 upon is, is uh, not 1 upon is that best is 2R into R divided by 2R plus R that means uh, 2R squared 2R squared upon 3R R, R gets cancelled so you say this is uh, 2 by 3R this is the total resistance of circuit X and what about y? y is this is uh, these are in parallel. So for parallel circuit, three resistors, so one upon R plus one upon R plus one upon R. That means three upon R, and then you 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 flip it. When you flipped it, so total resistance of circuit uh, y is one third of R. And for Z, these two are in parallel. Parallel mean if this is R and this is R, combined resistance will be half of these. And then this half of these two resistors is series. So half of R plus R. That means 3 by 2 R. Clearly, this is one third, the smallest, and then uh, Two third and then three by two. So your order must be y, x, and z. So y, x, and z, your option is C. Thirty seven. The diagram shows a variable resistor R and two fixed resistors connected in series in a circuit to act as a potential divider. The cell of electromagnetic force EMF6 has negligible internal resistance. A cell of EMF2 and a galvanometer are connected into potential divider. The resistance R is varied until the galvanometer reads zero. What is the resistance of the resistance R? So again, we have a two EMF sources. Most easy thing is we apply Kehoe's laws to figure out or to solve our, our situation. So we have a two closed loop. One is this and the other one is this closed loop so we can you know uh, apply Kehoe's laws separately especially because EMFs are given so Kehoe's second law so for lower circuit we can apply that uh, the EMF of the the lower loop 2 is equal to some of the potential differences and in this closed loop we have a two resistances only so I R plus 2 I 2 is the resistance so 2i, so v1 plus v2 equal to e. So this is our equation number one. And for upper loop, we can apply the emf6 is equal to ir1, not r1, ir plus 2i plus 10i. That means 6 is equal to ir plus 12i. Equation number two. I'm not solving these because now you see we have a equation one involving R and I. Equation two involving R and I. Clearly, you can solve equation one and two simultaneously to figure out value of R. And it's your uh, job to do. It's easy uh, solution. That's why I'm not solving it. So if you solve this, then R would be equal to 3 ohm. See if you can get this answer. So your option is uh, A. Thirty eight. A table gives some data relating to four 
neutral uncharged atoms w x y and z so these are neutral atom and nucleon or mass number 16 17 17 18 total number of particles including proton neutrons and electrons in atom are these two of atoms are isotopes of the same element what is the proton numbers of these element so we can you know subtract these two 24 minus 16 if you do 24 minus 16 you have 8 26 minus 17 is uh, 9 25 minus 17 is 8 and 28 minus 18 is 10 clearly when you are subtracting this is mass number number of protons and the neutron and this is all the three that means these are basically only proton numbers proton numbers because neutral atom number of electrons equal to number of proton so you can say these are number of electrons or number of protons uh, are the same that means 8 and 8 so w and y as are isotopes with you know mass number sorry charge number 8 so proton number is 8 option is b what is not fundamental particle electron neutrino neutron and positron clearly electron neutron and positron all the three a b and d they belongs to lepton family a neutron is not the fundamental particle which is a baryon so is not a fundamental particle neutron neutron made of quarks so option is c an unstable an unstable nucleus decays and emits beta particles which charge changes if any occur to quarks composition of the nucleus quarks change and so on so remember beta emission uh, we have a two types of beta emission beta negative and beta positive so beta negative is in the sense that if you have a nucleus x and uh, charge z mass a and it is emitting a beta negative suppose so beta negative minus one zero so the new nucleus turns into z plus one charge number is increased and mass stays the same and the reason is because it is emitting electron so the easiest example is neutron which is charge number zero is converting into proton so you say when neutron converts or decays into proton so charge is decreased so in order to conserve this charge an electron has to released negative electron has to release along with the neutrino i am not writing here neutrino here so there will be neutrino but for for our purpose is uh, you know electron is emitted so this is called beta negative now if you see the quark composition of neutron and the proton for neutron quark composed of up down and down and converting into proton meaning proton quark composition is up up and down that means this down quark is converting into up so down quark is decreasing and up quark is increasing so this is a uh, up quark is adding plus one and down quark is decreasing minus one so your option is b thank you very much i hope you uh, understood this take care see you next time